so I've been thinking lately because obviously my spiritual home away from home Berlin is basically off the books for a while it feels like I read an article recently that said Berlin has turned into like some COVID hotspot or something like it's going a bit crazy over there they're investigating certain party members for you know fraud I don't know it's going crazy over there things are not great as they should be and I can only imagine what people's mental health is like in a place like that where effectively there's no point of living in a city like berlin unless you've got the ability to party do you know what i mean it kind of renders that city null and mute or at least you've got the opportunity to basically gallivant around the city regardless of what you're doing even if you're not listening to techno music or you're just hanging around or you're doing your thing that city kind of requires you to gallivant around places meet random people and whatnot and when that's taken away from you it basically what's the point of being there so i can only imagine what those guys are going through so again if you're out there and you're hanging in just you know, if you're out there and you're suffering just hang in there if you can man hang in there um times will get better but because of that i'm now having to look at other places that i want to go to get my little um whole, what you got ryan air techno fix and i was thinking about um, going to ukraine going to kiev um specifically because i've heard it's a great place to party um i follow this um instagram account that i used to ch and, sorry i haven't checked in a while but because i haven't been using instagram but what's the account called it's called like Soul 2 Vibes or something like that. I think it's called Soul 2 Vibes, right? Um, it's a really good Instagram account that basically follows or basically profiles and uploads video clips of loads of people in basically Kiev partying and having an absolute sick time. So it's really one of my favorite accounts to follow. And another one I think called Closer for the club Closer itself. So that's pretty cool. And also I remember a few years ago, there was this rumors or stories about this club over there in Kiev, unnamed club. I think it was a symbol or, or whatever the... the um, or whatever the flipping the script or what is it no, what is it called when you write the style of it what whatever the ukrainian language is for that club's name was basically that symbol but it wasn't called anything right in english or anything but it was supposedly designed by the same people who designed um the interior of berkheim um so there's loads of synergy there supposedly a lot of the people that play in places at berlin would go and play there regularly too so it was basically known as a bit of a hot spot that people went to and supposedly from what i read online too the sound system's absolutely incredible but of course me being who I am and looking the way that I do, I was a little bit nervous about deciding to go to a place like Ukraine because I remember when I went to Prague once and kind of ventured a little bit outside of the main city ring, the looks I was getting were really kind of worrying for the most part. I know most of it was just probably people just like, you know, um, curious why somebody looked like myself was this far out of town, but still it kind of reminded, because usually when I go around town, unless I kind of have a really bad interaction with a police officer or some lady clutching her bag, you kind of forget what, what color you are, do you know what I mean? Because you're just living life. You, I don't wake up every day and flipping, you know, do a flipping Harlem shake or do you know what I mean? Or flipping, um, you know, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? That's not what I'm doing when I wake up at the time. So for the, I, don't, I know some people might do. They wake up in a Harlem shake straight away whilst they got their do-rag on and whatever, but I don't do that. I just try and live my life. But when you go to these places, you are reminded that you look nothing like them and you're not the same. So it's not really the best this place to be, you know, on the holiday with your guard down, trying to relax when you're you're not too sure if some flipping Nazi's gonna run down the street and kick you in the head. So I was a bit nervous about that. But supposedly I've heard through a couple of people, someone that I kind of DM'd actually on Instagram a couple of years ago, maybe a few months ago, sorry, who's um who seems like a little bit of a hipster scene boy from Berlin who basically told me that no, it's fine. I'm a black kid. I went there a few times and it's cool. But again, it's hard to take someone's like that advice or recommendation because he's an incredibly cool person who has an incredibly cool job. So essentially everyone wants to lick your ass anyway. Whereas I'm just a random tourist that's just going there to have a good time and party. Do you know what I mean? And, f and kind of f uh, fist pump in the air and shit. So maybe it'll be different for me. But I'm hoping it won't because so far anyway, I've not really seen any crazy reports that say it will be anything different. But I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm thinking of going there. Supposedly flights to go there are like what? 30 no sorry flights to go their duration time is like three hours which is you know something to get used to being on a Ryanair flight if you know about Ryanair seats and stuff and how uncomfortable that plane is it's all well and good going on that plane when you're going to Barcelona Madrid maybe parts even Scandinavia or something it's like two and a half hours it's all well and good but three hours in those seats is like oh that's tough in it but hey um and then of course the flights themselves aren't that expensive I think there's like I think the max I saw it out was about 100 quid um return the only issue is that i think there were only like two flights that leave per day so it's not like those popular destinations where you've got like you know four or five in one day i think the flights are basically one in the morning one in the evening that's just basically about it so that's something to get used to 
the accommodation looks incredibly cheap compared to other places that I've been to. It kind of reminds me of the old school Berlin times when you could get your own basically apartment in the heart of the city or where the hipsters all are in like Neuklund for like 150 quid for like a weekend. Now you can't never get those prices. I mean, it's like 200, 300 pound plus. I saw the Airbnbs for a Kiev weekend, which would for me be arriving on a Friday and leaving on a Monday. It was already about 150. I was like, okay, this is definitely my place to be. I just don't know where location wise, I'll probably have to get it somewhere close to all the clubs are because again i don't know the city too well but i did have um this map on here that shows basically a google review of the actual um club itself and what people actually have said about it and what they liked and what they didn't like um I've actually they might have some pictures because i don't think there's any pictures actually on what you call it on google of it because obviously you can't take pictures inside when you're actually in the place but this is kind of a an outside look of what it kind of looks like so you've got this you know um you got this very uh, austere, stark building, you know, that I'm guessing that's been purposely left as is with all the improvements made inside, which I've always loved. I've always loved the idea of like rocking up to a place like this where it looks derelict and it looks abandoned, but then you open the doors and it's completely, you know, it's amazing inside. You know I mean, architect, interior design to detail, amazing furniture, great lighting, sound system is insane. So I've always liked that kind of thing. Supposedly it's also called this. It's also called whatever street name it is. Where have you pronounced that word? That's why it's also called. So it's not always called the sign, but that's what I've basically seen on there. And let's go back to see some of the reviews, what people have to say about it. Obviously, I've saved up my maps because I'm definitely uh, aiming to go. And let's see what some of these reviews say about this place. But it does look really interesting. And for the most part, from what I've seen in terms of listings, they have uh, just the same kind. Not the same, but they do have quite a lot of kind of homegrown people playing too, which has been good, good to see. A lot of people that I don't really recognize names wise were filling in the list and then they have a, a few, um, a couple of, you know, international acts here and there that kind of pop in. So that should be pretty cool. So someone says here 10 weeks ago, a better outdoor venue than any Berlin. Um, great lineup and people the main dance floor is a bit too dark in the winter a few of my friends fell because they couldn't see <laughs> would be nice to have a bit more light to see people dance and flirt after or also pumping in fresh air would be a bit different still a five-star experience it's hard to say five stars when your friends drop on the floor so maybe some of them fainted or you know maybe twisted their ankles you couldn't see anyone hooking up so you didn't get that kind of you know um you didn't get some of that visual stimuli of people kind of flirting and having loads of adult fun and also there was no fresh air so what you were recycling in people's bo that's not really a five-star review but i like the optimism um it says here the site claims that there was no room for discrimination it's just three weeks ago actually someone said guy in yeah 50 percent of the line had to turn back around the door because they weren't allowed to go inside no reason was given to anyone and the crew was smiling constantly while people had to turn back on new year's eve to go back home through the rain worst experience ever i don't like this sort of stuff i don't think again when it comes to certain places in general, in general, I'm not a fan of elitism. I'm not a fan of snobbery. I'm not a fan of gatekeeping. I'm not a fan of, you know, if you've not got, if you've basically got the means, you're not being allowed in a certain place because you don't have a certain look. But unfortunately, when it comes to nightlife and it comes to clubs, people, especially when it comes to going out at night, they tend to get a bit loopy. Drugs, alcohol is involved. People just let down the inhibitions and maybe sometimes the worst parts of some people's personalities come out. And I think sometimes in these sort of clubs where they're not essentially catered towards the general public, they're mostly catered to people who kind of get it, right? For the most part, it's cringy to say, but that's the, that's the case. If you're going to go to like a general club that's going to invite or allow anybody in that's got money, you know where to go. But if you go into these places, you're obviously going for the experience because it's a little bit higher brow than other places. If that's the case, I think they should be allowed to have higher brow entry requirements. Now, some of the entry requirements may border on some discrimination sort of levels but again i don't think there's any way to stop that happening it could happen in a sandwich shop they could still give you the sandwich but they could treat you horribly you have no idea if the person woke up on the wrong side of the bed or they don't like the color of your skin you have no idea so kind of eliminating that doesn't really make sense and unfortunately also because of the popularity of these places they have no initiative or no incentive to change well no yeah no incentive to change actually um because why would they like the, for, for 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 however many people complain at these doors and shout and scream i'm never going to come back there's a million other people who are ready to take their spot it's the same sort of thing that people would say about people who complain online about airlines it's like oh i'm never gonna fly with this airline again it's like okay cool we don't care do you know what i mean like 
basically because there's plenty of other people that will and that will put up with our nonsense so there's no incentive for these people to change so that's where it gets a little bit tricky in that regard and like i said before i generally do think as a business you should be allowed to basically determine who or what you allow in your flipping establishment um to a certain extent of course um i think that's how it always should be and in by and large you know if you really want to go i am um, again this is sad to say i think you if you really want to go you eventually will get in it's, you know no one wants to be taking constant trips to a certain location flying somewhere paying for accommodation in the hopes of getting in somewhere that's a bit nuts but you know kind of framing your entire trip on one place anyway it's insane and even when i go places like i always have places that i want to go and check out cool but i always have contingency plans just in case it doesn't work out i don't just put all my eggs in one basket that sounds insane but you know everyone kind of different in that regard someone says here best lineup oh i actually like this ago two months ago best lineup the barmen do an excellent job someone says here a month ago i have attended raves of all kinds since 21 so since 2001 my home is toronto canada never have i been um, arbitrarily denied entry to any venue was totally sober money in pocket smile on face told not today not sure i want to try again ask politely why no answer provided you should never ask why really and that's like asking why when somebody breaks up with you you should just accept their decision and move on um it's embarrassing i'd imagine so i've been denied myself no i haven't really to be honest the only time i did get denied in the places when i was at a massive group of boys so i should have really known better and then we actually tried to go around the corner and take off our jackets and try again like as if they wouldn't have recognized us i mean i already looked the way that i look right? imagine me taking off my jacket imagine me coming to the door with one jacket on you telling me no and then me turn around the corner and take putting on my friend's jacket and coming back again you'd be like are you taking a piss about what but obviously i was drunk and high so i didn't really gather what was going on so that was the only time i've actually been denied and again i don't really put all my eggs in one basket i always have contingency plans or other places i want to go to just in case um and it's not that deep for me if i don't get in i don't get in i mean it's just a club i don't care um and a person says here three weeks ago oh these are bad reviews three weeks ago it says our claims to be a uh, territorium of freedom free of racial judgments but after standing in an hour for rain we weren't sent home without a reason after speaking to a citizen of kiev it turns out it shouldn't go there as a foreigner the whole freedom image they're playing or turn out to be as fake as it could be they're trying too hard to be burgundy but again no one's really talking about they keep saying discrimination and not being judged or racial thing but no one's actually saying if they're black or not that's what people want to hear are you black are you asian like let me know like let be be clear or is this people from hungary saying i was discriminated against like mm, i don't know man I don't know if i buy that one you know what i mean that's why that's what i, I want to see i want to see a group of black kids just said oh we tried to get in here and they said no i don't see that so far another one from a month ago smaller than Burkhine called an open audience together with an incredible level of facilities either for partying or even relaxation it's beautiful and crowded booth at Saturday night and Sunday afternoon very strict door policy though so dress some kind of underground style and keep it positive in front of the entrance well it kind of reminds me of the old days so back in the day when places were a lot less popular as they were before it was very hard to get into certain places either you had to queue really long or when you got to the front someone would tell you no which made those places unfortunately that much more desirable because you were like okay cool next time i go i'm definitely getting in here that's basically the, the crux of the situation and if a really strict place exists i don't think that's a bad thing you could go to certain restaurants in japan or so in tokyo and you could not be served or you won't be let in just because of the cut of your jib or because of the time of day you went there or because they supposedly ran out of the produce but they just don't want to make it for you because they don't think you're worthy this things happen all the time and unfortunately this is one of the you know this is one of those kind of weird things that i'm kind of in two minds about because like i said i think it it must be super gutting to travel that far distance or whatever it doesn't matter how far you travel if you walk around the corner and to think you know because everything else in life if you have the money and you're willing to travel or you're willing to do what needs to be done you know yeah if you have the money basically or the means to you can basically do whatever you want so it must be a bit of a mind fuck to kind of go to a club and be told nah nah your money's not good here go away and then you ask why and they don't tell you anything and they turn their backs to you or you know or they push you away or they call the police like that must be hard to take another person here says burgundy's little brother don't forget to go home 
um, that's the name of the good documentary you should check out as well if you haven't checked out really nice one about the scene and all that stuff another person says here excellent stuff amazing crowd will definitely come back to ukraine again for this place another person says here three weeks ago such an amazing crazy place another person says five months ago my friends and uh, my friends and me come from berlin for pro okay for the conceptual party and we are all very positive surprised by the amazing club architecture other fun and friendly guests and the friendly and professional workers music was also very good we are all impressed and it's not easy to impress berlin party veterans we all we all want to come back thanks for the amazing experience all right mate take your head out of your own ass we can't impress berlin party. some of these people man like relax yeah you know i mean relax you're just going to a rave relax uh best set one of the best oh yeah i like this one one of the best ones ever totally burger and i was not expected to see what underground scene in eastern europe the only difference i compare to burger and door stuff is much friendly and i'm happy with that so one people some group of people say that door stuff are super rude and they're really strict other people say they're really friendly but i guess it depends where you're coming from if you're coming from a place where everyone's a dick that's going to be like it's going to be like going to disneyland if you're if you're used to people acting you know being overly nice to you at the door you're also going to be a bit surprised because people are going to be a bit cold i'd imagine so and also just imagine what uh ukrainian persons are like day to day they're not they're not like us brits i mean happy go lucky saying sorry or thank you a million times like they've, they've got a completely different way of acting so it's probably a way to kind of get it's probably take some time to get used to that so that's one place i want to check out and then the other place i want to check out is this place called arsenal what is it called um arsenal 23 or is that no arsenal 22 I don't know why it's called that, to be honest. To be really, really honest, I don't know why this random club in Kiev is named after a football club in the UK. But we move. There are some pictures of it, actually, um, which look pretty cool. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, there was this Dixon set from back in the day, not back in the day, but a few years ago from Boiler Room, where he's basically playing next to something that looks like this, like a Roman cathedral -y type, you know, churchy Catholic thing. And it looks really amazing. It also looks like the lighting's been done by um, what's his name, James Turnbull. Was it James Turnbull, that guy that Kanye's obsessed with? It looks looks like it's been lit by him in it, but the lighting's amazing in there, in terms of looks wise. So at least we've got some idea of what this place looks like on the inside. But for the most part, everything else you just basically have to attend, which is quite nice. It kind of reminds you of again of old Berlin because most of the places I went to, you didn't really get any images of them unless you were crawling through people's Facebook accounts and you happened to stumble upon something. Usually, most of the places were just you know unless you're there you don't get any idea of what's going on and who's playing at these places so let's see some of the reviews for this place um arsenal it says yeah amazing place a vulnerable vibe finally you can feel free and safety thanks for all the stars you perform great work everyone who wants to see how the best club in ukraine looks like don't waste your time on other places attend arsenal 22 as soon as you possible and you'll feel it listen to it and fall in love so i guess compared to the other place this might be a place where you probably get in a lot easier than the other one, which is why these people are going overboard by saying, don't go to other places, go here. Because I imagine everyone probably gets turf from the other main spot. So that's quite nice to know because they're not too far away from each other either, if I'm not mistaken, right? Look at the map. They're not, they're not too, yeah, they're not too far. It's like kind of, that's, where is it? It's here. No, it's there, right? No, it's there. It's there and it's like one long road all the way down over there. So not too far um let's continue on the reviews yeah another first three weeks ago see look at the look at the and this is somebody that's verified that's left a few reviews so not some scrub and 132 reviews have actually left this person they say the following about arsenal 22 avoid this place and be happy there are awesome alternatives you'll be much better served in clubs like colida um k41 closer hotel hvlv or bars like graham oh that's good to know these bars and stuff um nesdo sloy bar b2b and pretty much anywhere else enjoy the cater ah <laughs> oh, people hate it thanks for the super the super friendly team no but says smoking allowed gross easy way to catch covid or any virus where you're smoking in the country should be enforced a lot i quite like it i gotta be honest i have to be one of those guys that says i quite like when i go to what's it paris or the same thing where everyone was smoking um you go to berlin everyone's smoking indoors i quite like it it's annoying because once you come back home your whole clothes stink but it's quite nice to pretend you're a smoker too and buy a pack or something and then you know 
violently cough after a couple of drags <laughs> and then give the rest to somebody else it's quite thrilling um but it is quite nice i gotta be honest it kind of takes me back to a a much simpler time in life <laughs> um continue here another person says a venue that's clearly trying to emulate Bergheim, which is a laughable tickets were about 30 dollars for two of us which is standard that's pretty good i think we get to the door and they say that if you're not 21 you can't get in <laughs> this is clearly not true due to the fact that the people who are clearly not 21 will also get in without id checked i love tech ah that's see people when they leave reviews uh, this is why i don't like how people that leave reviews it's kind of similar to karen's whenever you see a video of a karen online they always start recording when they feel like they're gaining the upper hand but they never show you what led to the person they're arguing with to snap it never showed that they always show either when they gain the upper hand or when they feel like they or when they or when they feel like they're looking like a victim so that you can get sympathy for them and then when the full story comes out you're like oh this guy's this guy or girl is a flipping psycho the same here this person's admitting loads of information because i thought what they were going to say after they mentioned the ticket price was that oh we bought tickets online we got to the door and they said um you know it, it, tickets didn't guarantee entry that's annoying that's really because i know some places do that where they say where they put it in really small writing that tickets don't guarantee entry but if you don't know you don't check you just pay your money and you buy the ticket and you work up and then they say oh we don't like what you look like so you're not going to get in and they don't even offer you a refund on the door they tell you to email them later and it's just like come on if you're gonna turf me whilst i get there at least have a little petty cash bag there ready to give me the money back to be like okay cool sorry for the loss do you know what i mean um, but this is clearly a case of somebody not bringing their ID, thinking that they look over 21, being denied. Again, I don't understand people who go to foreign countries and don't bring ID when they go clubbing. It's like, what is wrong with you? Like, really, what is wrong with you? And that person says, I'll have techno, always have, but just because I wasn't wearing clothes deemed suitable for techno rave on account of the fact that I was only here for three days, we were turned away. I doubt we'll get money back for our tickets. I would avoid if you would, if I were you. Again, going to another city in another part of the world for three days not doing any research about what people that go there look like not doing any research about how strict they're on the door and just kind of gambling is a recipe for disaster i'm sorry these places are already insufferable already as it is the scene's insufferable you go to some record stores in some cities and you have these flipping you know dusty motherfuckers that you know are working for six pound an hour giving you dirty looks right because you're not touching the records correctly it's annoying and it kind of pisses me off but that's the scene. It's pretentious. It's full of people that are up there in asses. But for the most part, if you kind of keep at it, they all warm up and they're usually lovely people. But if, they, if they're pretentious in crappy record stores, imagine how pretentious they're going to be if they're the ones that have the ultimate power to say yay or nay to your night out. Like, you have to do yourself a favor, really. Another person says, here, had a blast here. The place is up the street, has an insane queue. And we found this place by mistake. And that was a blessing. Okay, so they probably went to the main one. And then they went there. Music was a um, religion. Another person says, I did a working documentation of the situation. The customer through. Oh, I don't know what that says here. Or the vintage. Okay, that's probably translated. I'm not going to get that one correctly. But yeah, so far, the reviews don't look too shabby. Very cool vibe. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that's the plan. Kiev to go. So if you um, have any information, my dear listeners, about Kiev and if you've been there before for a clubbing weekend, please let me know via the comments below or if you listen to the podcast, email me. I'll put the link to the actual... And actually, there'll be a, if you go to the main page of my podcast, there's actually a contact me button there at the top. There's a contact button, so you can actually click that. And then from there, you can obviously um, let me know what you guys think of... Uh, let me actually see if I can get up on here. The yeah there you go if what you actually think of kiev as a city and whether or not you would recommend it for a place for me to go to so if you actually check out my main uh podcast page which is excellentsinglishshow.libton.com which i obviously change it to the .com because that's horrible but regardless there's a contact me button there at the top so if you listen to the audio i'll put that in the show notes for you to check um email me let me know what you think of kiev um have you been there before would you recommend it would there other places that you think i should go to before visiting the main spots i kind of pointed out there let me know let me know